Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the class. Um, this is our second lecture on church and ministry administration. Let's go forward from where we paused. Okay, so we were talking, uh, this is on page 26, we were talking about employee development, that we look at ways in which we can keep developing people. And uh, we talked about some practical ways we can do this. And now here are some additional things um, we can do to help people grow professionally within the organization. So remember that for most people, they want to keep growing. It, it, very few, very few that you'll find there, you give them a job, they'll, they say, OK, I'm satisfied doing this. Don't give me anything more. That's very few. Most people are looking to grow professionally. They want to you know, do bigger things, better things. They want to, of course, earn more, uh, earn, uh, you know, see an increase in salary, et cetera, and so on. But in order for that to happen, they also have to grow professionally. And so we need to um, create opportunities for that growth. How can we do that? One is we can give them new projects to handle. So it's so, okay, hey, You've been doing this work so, so far. Let me give you something bigger, bigger responsibility, a bigger role. Can you take on a little bit more responsibility? So new projects, new opportunities, new assignments, uh, increased responsibility. Can you oversee little more areas of the ministry? You know, or even moving them up to new roles. So these are things we have to look at. Um, of course, in all of this, you need to consider what they're capable of. Like, do they have the competencies to take on these responsibilities? Secondly, can they handle that increased responsibility? Some people cannot. Like, you know, say, hey, uh, now you have to manage, you know, by six people. Some people may not be able to do that. Yeah, they're happy doing maybe something that they themselves do. But if they have to come in and they have to manage more people, they may find that difficult. Right? So uh, all the increased workloads, that means there's more work to be done. So that means they have to increase their efficiency. Because really, you still have just you know so many days, hours of work. But you have to do more in, in, the, in the given time. How can you do it? Be more efficient. Yeah. So uh, usually I would discuss with the people. Like I will say, hey, uh, I, I'm thinking about this. Would you be able to do you know, this extra work? Would you be able to take on this new area of ministry? Would you be able to take on this new project? Would you be able to do this? You think about it. You don't have to answer me now. Take two weeks. Think about it. Pray about it. And you come back to it. So usually I would just place it in front of them and say, okay, you go, take you know, take some time. Then you come back and tell me. At the same time, I'm also looking at, see, there are some people who will say yes to everything. <laughs> they, are very, they are very enthusiastic. No matter what you tell them to do, they'll say, yes, I'll do it. They are those kinds of people. So then for those kinds of people, I have to be careful, you know, because They'll say yes to it, but then they'll struggle afterwards. Or um, they may, if they're finding it difficult, they won't know how to come back and say, I'm actually finding this difficult. I, I need help with this. So um, for those kinds of people, I myself will be a little careful. Like, hey, to move, give them a little bit more. Uh, is it OK or not? Because I know by default, they will say yes. Right. So I'm a little careful. For some people, they need to be pushed. That means the other kind of people who will just stay back and as long as you don't just tell them, they just keep doing what they want. But they actually have the potential for more. They actually have the potential to stretch. So for them, you have to kind of in a nice way convince them that they can handle something more. They can do more work, etc. So 
you, you have both kinds of people so you have to work with them a little differently and uh, as you and, and never force them to do more you always let them agree to taking on the responsibility and you put it before them uh, you say this is what it will cost meaning you have to do all of this work are you ready for it can you do it you think about it you come back so uh, even if i have seen the potential i have seen that they can do this uh, the final decision is theirs so I give it, let them do it. And then if we agree that, yeah, he or she comes back and says, yeah, I'm ready to take it up. Good, we give them the role, et cetera. And then usually if they are growing up, then we will also increase their salary. That means, because now they're carrying more responsibility. They're handling more leadership, they're handling others, et cetera. So then based on that, their salary also goes up. Once they have taken up the new role, and uh, they're doing this stuff. So the whole thing is we need to develop people. We can develop them while they're doing the job. We also develop them by giving them new opportunities. And the nice thing is if somebody goes up, takes on a new role, then the, their own role in many cases, things that they are doing actually creates opportunity for some new people to come in there. You know? So it's actually helping them grow, and it's also helping somebody else grow, come into that place, and as they move up or take on bigger responsibilities. So, on. so it, it is good for the organization, it's good for other people uh, to come in and take up some new roles. And so now, the next thought is, uh, and I'll just finish these things here, uh, is every, every, the way we work is every January, we will revise the salaries of people. So generally, every January, people will get a raise. Every time. every December, they get a bonus. I mean, I'm talking about the full-time stuff. Stuff. Every every de December, everybody gets a bonus, meaning up to twenty-five thousand rupees, they will get a bonus uh, based on the calculation. And then every January, we will revise the salary. But it is based on performance, right? So, if there has there have been no improvement on performance, then some sometimes I will tell them, say, hey, you know, uh, this past year, you know, uh, of course I'm, I'm I'm talking to them throughout the year, but there has not been much important in, improvement in your performance. Will leave your salary where it is. Okay? So in some cases, you know, on some occasions I've done that. Well, they've really not, you know, just they've done the same thing the whole year. They've not made efforts to take things up. So I'll say we'll leave it there. After you change your, improve your performance, then they'll take up your salary. But in most cases, people always, you know, they always are growing. They are doing something better. They're taking on responsibility. So you are seeing that. So, uh, uh, you know, every January, their salary will be raised. Um, and we have an upper limit, like we can't just raise their salary randomly, <laughs> you know. Uh, so we, I mean, in, 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 so in talking about Indian rupees, uh, it will be between five to 15,000 rupees is generally the increase that they will get in January. That is five to 15,000 rupees per month, right? So if you multiply that, that by 12, that's their annual salary increase. But the monthly salary will go up by five to fifteen thousand rupees in that range. If they've done some improvement, okay, five thousand monthly. Uh, if they've done uh, fairly well, ten thousand. They've done exceptionally well, okay, fifty. If they've not improved at all, then no salary change. So just based on their work, it's a standard thing we do for everyone. Uh, reasonable. So it's not it's not some huge raise like you know corporates would give, but it is something that says, look, we recognize you've improved, you've grown, and so therefore your monthly salary will also increase like this. So that's something we do every year. 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if, you know, during the course of the year, if people are not performing or if there is a change in the role, like uh, then we at that time, even during the course of the year, we will revise the salary. You know, like if somebody's not performing and we have to change to a different role, yeah, then we will have to adjust the salary based on the new role that they're taking. And if the new role does not require the same level of skill and responsibility, they're coming down, so to speak, then yeah, we will bring the salary down. So if something like that happens during the course of the year, that it's rare, but if it does happen, then we will change. Right? Um, dealing with difficult situations. So, you know, uh, there are two, two kinds of approach, two things we do here. One is uh, there's a three strikes approach, like I think I shared it last time, that if people are doing something that's wrong, or they're, they're not performing well. We tell them, you know, first warning, or first time we have a conversation, record it. Second time we have a conversation, record it. And if it still doesn't change third time, it's okay. Now we have to bring this to a close. So the third time, if something repeats, we close it. And in some situations, it will result in immediate termination. If there is any example, with any conduct that is uh, really bad, immediate termination. So I'll, I'll give an example, one or two examples. Um, I don't know if I've shared it with this, but this happened many years ago um, in our, this was in our, in our, among our church staff, there was one guy who was working. He was a married man. He was married. He had two kids. There was another lady who was working at staff, well, our full time staff in church, church office. They were working. And uh, she, her husband had passed away just recently. They were all part of church only, but her husband passed away. And, and she, she had two children. So one is a married man, one lady, okay, her husband has passed away means. She can get married. She can get married. That's fine. We're not against it. But what happened? I observed that these two people were getting very close in the church office. And sometimes, and again, this is not like I'm I'm sitting and looking at the camera as a baby. It just happened that, you know, I, I, I think it was a Saturday. I can't remember now exactly. It's happened years ago, so I can't remember the details. But anyway, I was walking into the office, and I saw these two people in a kind of awkward, was very close to each other, talking, and nobody else was there. I felt a little suspicious, but I had no evidence, and we don't have CCTV cameras in our, in our church office, so I have no evidence. So I called this guy. I spoke to. Him. I said, uh, see, uh, I don't know if anything is going on between you and the other person. You are a married man. You have your wife and you have two kids. Yes, her husband has passed away. She can get married to whoever she wants, but not. you cannot get into any kind of relationship with her. So please be careful. So I just had a conversation with him, just warned him. Because I don't have any evidence. I just happened to come into the office that time. I saw them both there and nobody else was there. So I, I was a little suspicious, but I have no evidence. So I just had a conversation with him. I left it at that. Then uh, again, I, I, I talked about the actual details, but maybe I would say maybe within two weeks or something like that, I get a call from his wife. Now they're all part of the church. His wife is calling me and says, Pastor, this problem is going on. This man, he has, when he comes home, from home he's sitting and chatting with the other lady. So now I have actual evidence. His wife is telling me. He comes home, he's sitting and chatting with the other lady and he's saying, I have work to do. Now I know there is, they have no work in common. They're in different areas of 
ministry there will be no reason even in the office to talk to each other like there's no common for him to go home and be chatting to this other lady and giving the excuse i have work to do i know there's no work between them now the wife has called me ah and i said okay now i took it very serious and i i i said oh, see okay the wife is, and then she was telling me it's going on every day for hours he comes home he's chatting with the lady and it's happening every day she has talked to him he says all these things then i said okay uh you come on a saturday so i call them on a saturday afternoon when nobody will be in the office office is closed that particular saturday office was closed so i told her and i told uh, i told these two people the for church staff i told them to come and i told his wife to come and this lady's kids i told them also to come they were um both were teenagers so you know like 16 and 18 or something like that so i told them also to come so they all came on saturday to the church office so first i called his wife i said you tell me what is going on so i spoke to her separately then she told me everything see He's sitting at home, he's chatting all this, this is going on. Sometimes he actually goes out with that lady or the thing. So this is the wife telling me, first hand information. Okay. Then I called that lady's kids. I said, You come, what's happening? You see, our mom is at home, she's talking to that man all the time. Sometimes they go out together. I said, what is this? He's a married man. This is a Okay, so her husband has passed away. She can get married to somebody, but not to another married person who's actually married now. So I have actual evidence from the wife and from the children. Then I called these two people in. I asked them. I said, uh, is anything going on between you? And sitting on the table in front of me, they said, no, nothing is going on. I'm like, hey, I just spoke to your wife. I just spoke to your children. They have told me what they are seeing. It is not lies. And uh, these two people sitting in front of me are saying nothing is happening. They are just friends. Nothing on it. So that was it. I said, right now, please, both of you, take all your belongings, dismissed. Now, how can, and they were terminated. I said, you come in and collect your dismissal letter, termination letter, then dismiss. So that was immediate termination on Saturday itself. Now, why do you make that kind of a decision? It is because we are a church. And as, we, as a church, we have certain standards. Now, if this was a corporate, they will not interfere what you do personally. That is your problem. You come and do the work and go. You have relationship and all. That is all your problem. It's out to you. But this is church. Where conduct, uh, and especially, you know, this one is, uh, it is totally against what the word of God teaches us. So immediate service. And then we tried to work with them outside, like this, because they were members in the congregation at that time. I dismissed them from being staff, but then I tried to work with them as church members, tried to speak with them, but they would not change. It was, it ended up in a very bad place. So it just went on, it became worse. This man got divorced, he got married to this, this lady. I don't know if he got married or whatever, but they moved in. So it became very bad. Uh, although we tried to work with them outside. But this is an example where uh, it's a difficult situation. Church staff doing this, and you have to deal with it. And I remember that during those that time, I actually got a call from one of the church people. They called me, so we saw these two people walking together like this, going around, what's happening? You know, so it was actually, and they know these two people are church staff. They're working for the church, in the church office. They have certain responsibilities and they're being observed outside from others. So I even got a call, you know, so it was 
quite embarrassing. Uh, so, so anyway, this is just one example of a difficult situation which you have to handle. Uh, but because they are staff, it is immediate termination. You cannot handle it. We cannot let it go on. And so there have been other uh, difficult situations. For example, I had requested, you know, this will happen during the COVID time. Because of COVID, we could not all meet, you know, we couldn't do the normal work. Everybody, okay, you all work from home, etc. And I'd given everybody work to do from home. And so to one person, I said, uh, please document uh, the processes, the whole thing that you're working on uh, in that particular area of uh, ministry, document it. And please also plan on building that area of ministry, you know, because uh, we would like to hire at least two more people for that ministry. It's your responsibility to grow that area. And this was all work from home. So it, all that person had to do is to sit down and write down, you know, because uh, they're not meeting, that a lot of activities closed. Just that when you write down, document this. And I'd given everybody a timeline. So within one or two months, please finish this work, send it to me. Everybody else sent their work. And this person didn't send. So I reached out, hey, what happened? They're supposed to send the thing. I even sent him samples. Please you know, look at these things. You work on this document, document the process, the systems that in your area of ministry and see how you can have a plan to build it you know, later on tonight. Yeah. Then I gave him another two months. He didn't do it. So now I'm, I've given warnings. I've made lots of requests. It's almost, and I, I couldn't understand why this person would not write this. And, you know, in, in all, I don't think it would have taken more than, you know, six, seven pages of writing to actually document what was happening. Others have done it. They all sent it to me by the date they given. This person didn't do it. I gave another two months. He didn't do it. So then when we were able to meet in person, I called him. I said, what happened? Why? No, I don't want to do it. I said, I don't want to do it. So what is the problem? You know, why others have done their work? Why, why can't you just document in your ministry area? You're responsible. Why can't you write it down? And, uh, you know, we want to build this area. So then, so I had given him almost six months extra. No, I was okay, COVID, this, that, whatever. Thing. Didn't do it. Then I had to make the decision. I mean, I found this very silly. It was very silly because this, it was so silly because all he had to do was write your area, write it down, all about the process, the systems, how you all think. Just write it down and share it. And then plan, have a plan to build your area. It's very simple. There's nothing complicated. He didn't do it. And I had to make the decision to dismiss. Right? And we gave him one month's notice dismissed. So he said he was a nice guy. I had no problem with his work. Only thing, this one thing he refused to do. I'm like, why? <laughs> and he would not change. After so many requests, so many things, he would not change. Then I had to let him know this is a this is a silly thing, but it's a serious request. I mean, everybody is doing it. Why can't you do it? No. This was I'm very sad. I think, uh, I don't know whether he's got a job after that. I don't know. I don't know you know, uh, it was a sad situation. It was actually unnecessary. It, it was unnecessary, but it happened. And that was a difficult situation where we had to, you know, terminate for actually for no valid reason. So good man. Good person, part of the church. Just he was refusing to document his own ministry. Write it down. All right. Um, this to wrap up here. Exit interview. Usually, when people are leaving, uh, the HR would talk to them just to ask them, you know, how was your experience here? 
Do you have any feedback for us as an organization, how we can The exit interview is useful because people will say anything and whatever they want because they're leaving. <laughs> and that's a good thing to, you know, to do because uh, that's when they can just say what they want. They're not worried. Uh, but it's a good thing to get that feedback. It'll show us where we are lacking and where we can improve. Uh, another important point is to follow whatever labor laws are there in, 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 your, part, in your state, in your part of the world. So, you know, for example, um, uh, contributing to uh, people's uh, retirement fund is a law. So we have to follow that. Uh, deducting the tax in the, from the salaries is a law. We have to follow that. Uh, if an employee works for at least five years, works full time five years, and then they leave, uh, we have to pay them gratuity. We have to calculate the gratuities. That's a law. We have to follow that. Uh, they have a formula that we have to use. So all these are laws, and we have to follow uh, with your with follow with the full time staff, whatever they need. Okay. Um, so I just answered some two questions. These were questions that were asked by previous batches. You know, what can we do to help people grow within the organization? I shared some thoughts. You know, we can train them, give them opportunities, mentor them, uh, give them feedback, give them opportunities to learn. And here's a very important question. How do we separate the personal life of the church staff and their work at church? So the thing is, a lot of the people who are church staff are also part of the church. They're in the congregation. And we prefer that because they get to, uh, you know, they, they, they really understand what the church is about. So it's very easy when they have to make decisions, they're all aligned to where the church is going. So it's a, it's a benefit. Uh, but then, you know, uh, how do we separate out their time of work in the church office with their own personal life? So we try, so I try to be very careful about that. Otherwise, work, church work can just fill up their own personal life. Full. Even at home, they're work, doing church work. You know, and it will affect their marriage, it will affect their family, all of them. So one is simple things. And I try to be very respectful. Like You don't have to take church work. You don't have to take it home. You do the church work right here. We will not interfere in your personal time. So I try to avoid messaging or calling our church staff outside of work hours, unless it is an emergency. So emergency will happen. Somebody is not well. Some some somebody wants, you know, is in the hospital. Some something example. Somebody passed away. A funeral has to happen. Of course, those things are emergencies. We will talk, uh, you know, at all times. But otherwise, for well, church work related matters, do it during office hours. Do not disturb them on their personal time. And so we respect each other's like the way. So that's I will not disturb them, they will not disturb me, or we will not disturb each other during personal time unless it is an emergency. Okay. So we keep that separate. So then, um, then also, uh, you know, we what they are free to do whatever they want with their personal time, meaning, you know. If they, how they use their person, we do not interfere. We don't even disturb that. It's up to them how you use your person. As long as you work, do the church work during the office hours, 40 hours a week, that's all. And uh, uh, we don't check on you know, where you go, where you come. No. The only important thing is uh, the, the, the testimony has to be good. You know, like you can't do something that where somebody sees you and then they call and say, hey, one of your pastors, I saw him drunk. <laughs> Those kinds of things they can't do. Uh, the conduct person. Keep your person this one. You do how you want. You spend your time. So uh, we do not, some, some of our people may have their own ministry outside. We don't interfere with that. You know, if they want to go preach in some other church or conference, you want to go, go do it. That's up to you. So we don't interfere with that. As long as they're not doing, you know, Doing some fundraising or some promotions that that, that are not uh, so right. Um, of course, there are some guidelines. We tell our church staff not to get involved with anyone in our congregation 
in any kind of business dealing financial matters not want to that okay? because if somebody is a church star they get into some sort of a financial dealing with people in the church something goes wrong it will affect us it will reflect back on the church itself and it has happened in the past and it's it's led to some very difficult situations so as a guideline we say don't do anything you want to do business good for with other people outside but don't do you know don't go into business dealings with people from the church and that is that is between church staff and church members don't do that between church members that is their decision we don't interfere and um, family constraints sometimes you know uh, people have to travel or so on we uh, we you know we 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 try to manage that uh, sometimes the wife expects husband to be at home all the time say no 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 this is real work this is not uh, <laughs> just if, if that person was working in some office they have to go to the office this also is real, real office work they have to be in the office and do ministry concert at home and you know do those things okay let me see the questions on the chat okay so question on the chat from Jifinam. Have you ever felt guilty, bad after terminating someone? If yes, how did you overcome it? All right. So that's a good question. And, and the answer is, yeah, you always feel bad. <laughs> always feel bad that you had to dismiss somebody or you had to make a very tough decision. It's not easy, right? You wish there was an easier way out that, hey, I could have done something to help this person. Right? But then, uh, I tell myself that I have done it with a clear conscience. You know, that I have explored all the possible options to try to help this person. But we couldn't do anything more. Like, we couldn't give them a different role. We couldn't help them learn something. I mean, we couldn't. It, it reached a situation where we had to make this decision. And we've done it with a clear conscience. So my heart is clean, my hands are clean. I feel bad that you know I had to make the decision that because they also will not feel good. They've lost a job or they, they've been made to change. Something's changed, right? So I feel bad about it, but then I've done what I can and my conscience is clear. Now, in some cases, there has been retaliation. You know, for example, uh, I remember one case that happened some years ago where we had a, a like people in charge of a certain ministry responsibility, and uh, things were okay, but there were certain things that had gone wrong, where, especially in in. Um, their interaction with some other person in the congregation because it became very bad and that's not a good thing right you know as as people in leadership we have to set a good example we can't be in competition with somebody some church member and have that relationship so that was one thing that happened plus i noticed that uh, because they were also quite busy they were not able to actually take things forward so I'd waited almost, uh, so they had been in that person at least three years, I think. And um, that particular year, and I had been always, you know, like I'd been meeting them on a monthly basis. I'd been saying, okay, keep, you know, try to do this, try to grow, try to grow. But that was not, they were not able to do it because they were busy, whatever. They were not able to do it. So then I said, okay, see, what is the best? So putting all of these things together and taking a lot of these factors into consideration, I was, uh, on that, um, I said, "What is the best decision for the good of the organization?" And so I took all the factors. In that. I mentioned two of them. There were other other things that I don't want to talk about. But I took all this, and then I said, "Okay, so the best thing would be to request them to step down, and let somebody else who knows how to do this take over this ministry. In fact, there was somebody else who was doing it before who handed it to them." Uh, I thought it'd be an opportunity for them to grow, but over three years, uh, 
three, so whatever the duration was three plus years. Okay, it's not growing, so let him come back and take it. So my 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 thought was, and then I prayed over it because this was like I I think I prayed over this for two months. <laughs> Seriously, you know, this was like a very big decision. I mean, big means for me at that time that I'm going to ask these two people to hand this ministry back to the person who was having it before and to tell them to step down because I was all these factors are going, things are going. On. So I said, how will they take it? How will they be? Affected? For two months, I was praying, I was praying, God, this is what I feel, this is the right decision to make, but how to do it? How do I tell them and how do I make this? And so I was literally, you know, internally, nobody else knew. I did not discuss it with anybody else. I was uh, struggling with it in prayer for two months. And I had been giving uh, like feedback to this couple over several months now, saying, hey, you have to work on this, you have to work on this. It's not happening. So they know my expectation, they know it's not happening, and all the other things are going around. So finally, I called them the office. I said, see, uh, this is the decision. Over the next one month, I said, one, yeah, over the next one month, just hand it off to this other person. So all I, in my mind was this, this person was already handling the ministry. You're just giving it back to the person. And within one month, we can do it. Actually, you can do it in one day because the person already knows how to run this ministry. In one day, you can run it. But I said, give one month. Because, you know, I just also wanted them to accept it. And neither did it. It became such a big issue. I was actually shocked. You know that um, it, it, it kind of blew out of proportion. You know that then they went, it, they, it was like... Uh, I was crying in front of the people and all those things. I didn't expect that. You know, I, all I was going to say is, hey, you hand this back to this person, you step down. I didn't tell them to leave the church. I didn't tell them you cannot serve in the church or you cannot be a part of the church. I didn't say any of that. I just said, please hand this role back to, hand this off to person. Over one, over one month, transition. That one month was so difficult. I don't know what conversations they had with people, all of that. And I felt so bad. I went and I apologized. I went and met the person. I said, see, I didn't mean to hurt you. I only was thinking about what is good for the church. And I was requesting you to hand it back. It's good for you, good for the church, good for everybody. That is all that is there. I didn't, I didn't envision it to become such a big problem. And uh, People in the church were also affected. What is this? But I, one thing I, I, I knew my conscience was clear. I knew I was making the decision in the best interest of the church. Yes, these people didn't want to give up that role. So it hurt them really bad. The person who was coming in was somebody who was already handling it, the role previously. So they, he can just start one day one. But so eventually they left the church, they went and started their own ministry outside, all this that happened. So it was a very painful experience. But the thing that helped me was, God, I made this decision with the future of the church in mind. That was all. I saw all these things, I took all these factors in, and I did it for the best of the people. That's it. My heart is clean. I prayed, I struggled with it, my hands are clean. But yes, it was painful, very difficult, you know, so that was uh, one difficult situation. But uh, we came through, everything is going fine, you know, uh, church people understood. Today, and you know, the thing, I, one important thing was, I never spoke about them, I never spoke about the matter in the church. Other than making that one Sunday, making the announcement that we are going to make this change over the next one month, uh, this is the change that's going to happen. Other than making that announcement and thanking them in front of everybody and praying for them, I never spoke about it in church. I never discussed it with anybody else. 
Only some people came and asked me personally. I explained to them why I made the decision, how I did it. Only for those who came to me personally and asked me, one or two couples came and asked me, I explained it. So because of that, people in the congregation respected me so much more. They said, we saw how you journeyed through this, that you did not speak, you did not say anything bad. You didn't, you know, even though the, there was a repercussion, you didn't speak about it, you didn't speak bad, you never did it. We saw how you journeyed through it. And we respect you for it. So the congregation itself, you know, they all stayed. And so, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Sorry, that was a long answer to your question. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. So the last piece there, um, uh, you know, on page 27 was how do we pastor church staff? So here's a very kind of a funny situation, maybe, that the people who are working in the church, they are church staff, but they're also congregation members. So in one way, you are their, you are their lead or a boss, so you, you say that, but you're also their pastor, right? So uh, how do you handle both the roles? So it's very clear. In the office, when I'm talking to you about your work, I'm talking to you as a boss or your employer or whatever you, how you want to look at it. But if you come to me with a personal problem, something, okay, then I'm speaking to you as a pastor. You know? I will speak to you with care, love, and share the word and pray with you, etc. But when it comes to work, I'm speaking to you as an employer. So that is very clear and somehow. It has, you know, we've been able uh, in the church uh, office, we've been able to see, you know, manage both because it is true. They are also part of the congregation. They also have personal and spiritual things that need to be addressed. But at the same time, you have to talk about work. And so, so to see both roles and to handle both roles is important. And um, thankfully, everybody in, in, the, in the staff have understood it and they, they're able to we're able to journey well together. Okay, so let's wrap for today. We'll uh, close in prayer. If there are no more questions, I hope these things are, you, know, you find these things useful, uh, things that you can take and, uh, you know, use in your own ministry and you're free to ask any further questions that are. Okay, but somebody close in prayer and then we'll dismiss this. Anyone could try? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class that we had. Jesus. But we thank you for everything that we learned on how to handle the employees and stuff. God, I just pray that you help us uh, to always have the focus on you and to walk in wisdom uh, and to love every people who are around us. So you be the wisdom and you guide us, Jesus, uh, even through the hardest situation and through everything. We thank you for Pastor Ashish uh, for teaching us all these uh, beautiful practical things from the Bible. And God, uh, we just give you all the glory. And as we step out into ministry, as we step out and meet people and handle them, Jesus, Whatever we have learned, help uh, Holy Spirit, you remind us so that we can handle the situation in the best way with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the, being part of the class. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you again next week. Have a good week. Bye.